Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a review of the 1986 Hillbilly horror film, Hunter's Blood. I don't have anything to show you on camera because this film is only available on VHS and Laserdisc, and I do not have either one in my possession currently. At, at least I don't think I do. I, I think I have it on VHS in storage in Michigan at my dad's house, but I'm not 100% certain, but I think I do. And I might have it here in, st in, a, in a tote somewhere, but I don't know for sure. And with how my VHS are stored, it's kind of a pain in the ass to try to look for them for anything. So I, I honestly, even if I do have it here, I, I really would not have it to show it to you right now because it's such a pain in the ass to get to it. Um, this is actually a film that I had heard of but never got around to seeing until fairly recently. A uh, subscriber of mine named Wraith, he actually uh, recommended this one to me. And I thought it was a perfect time to watch it since I've been watching these films that have similar plot lines like Survival Quest and so on and so forth. And I am really glad that Wraith brought it up because... I really like this movie. This is a true diamond in the rough and a hidden gem. Like, Hunter's Blood is my type of film. It's a lot of fun. It's really entertaining. It's fairly fast-paced. It's got likable characters. It's got a great cast. It's got solid direction. It's got a surprising amount of gore for a film like this. For a low-budget movie, it's got some really nice-looking shots in it, uh, especially from the from a directorial standpoint and the cinematography. Uh, overall, it's a really good film for what it is. I have a few issues with it, and I'll get to those later, but for the most part, almost every element in this film is really strong. And this is one of those films that is, this is why I keep digging. I keep digging through uh, just piles and piles of movies and digging through even piles and piles of shitty movies to get to films like this that are rarely talked about, that are obscure and are hidden and uncovering films like Hunter's Blood that really are genuinely good films that have just fallen through the cracks for whatever reason. This is a movie that it really does deserve a HD uh, remaster. It deserves a Blu-ray. This sounds like something that would be right up Vinegar Syndrome or Scorpion Films Alley. Uh, I hope Dark Force or Code Red doesn't get the rights to this. I hope they don't have the rights for this. Because that's a possibility too. Because Bill Olsen loves to just buy up rights and sit on them and do nothing with them despite other companies. Uh, like Vinegar Syndrome. Which he has a bone to pick with for some reason. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's one of those things that this really does deserve to be seen by more people. If you're a fan of the horror genre, or you're a fan of the hillbilly uh, horror genre especially, you definitely need to give Hunter's Blood a watch sometime. Now, it's directed by Robert C. Hughes, who before this, I think he did films like Memorial Valley Massacre and a few other things. Uh, he did a Playboy Centerfold video, I think. And uh, after this, he went on to do not much of anything. He directed a film called Zadar, The Cow from Hell. Okay? So, this movie represents the height of his directorial career, if you ask me. This is, I've flipped through some footage of some of his other films, and this is easily the best looking film that he's directed. Because the direction in this is actually, like I said, it's solid. It's solid direction. It's, it's not bad at all. Uh, he does a great job with POV shots of uh, the the van through uh, or it's more like an SUV or, or a pickup with a with a top on it through through the through the forest it's not really a jungle but it might as well be i mean this forest is so full of trees and shit it might as well be a jungle uh 
a jungle in 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 the deep in the south but yeah he's got some great use of pov shots uh some really beautiful uh, uh shots especially the one that's used for the the film's uh home video uh poster and and cover art which is actually based on a real shot in the film uh, that happens near the end of it where there's a the leader of of the hillbilly uh group of uh bad guys you know the the the, the uh the leader of the uh, hillbillies the evil no good hillbillies he's uh he gets shot and he falls in the water in like a river and the blood just flows into the river and the sun's glare bl glinting off the water and it's I can't really explaining it to you doesn't do it justice because it's a really absolutely gorgeous looking shot. So there are other shots like that uh, throughout the film. Uh, it's one of those movies that I really would like to see in HD and in widescreen because I think there's more to the film that I'm not seeing on a full screen transfer. That is not even really the best picture quality in terms of the brightness and so on and so forth. But yeah, Robert C. Hughes, it's too bad that he didn't really, this wasn't a hit. And he didn't really go on to do that much after this uh, of, of note. Because it seems like he definitely had uh, some talent. And uh, it looks like it was not necessarily wasted because at least he put it on, on film for this movie for people to see. But... He never really seemed to show the same kind of talent again. It's one of those things, I guess it was like a one-hit wonder for him. Because after this, his direction was nowhere near as impressive from what I've been looking at. It's written by Emmett Alston, and I love this script. It updates Deliverance in a way that makes it feel like it's not just a rip-off of Deliverance. I know a lot of people are considering this just a straight-up rip-off of Deliverance. But to me personally, it feels like its own film. And a big part of that is that it's got that 80s aesthetic. It's got that 80s charm with the dialogue and with the characters. Uh, I love the dialogue in this. It's witty, it's clever, it's hilarious. There's all these great back and forth between the characters, which I really enjoy. And I miss in a lot of films today. Like the, the witty repertoire, you know, the, the, the back and forth between the characters. You know, where they're, you know the insults and the pot shots and, and the fun, you know, that kind of stuff. I miss that in, in horror films, especially. So you don't see that as much nowadays. Because I guess modern audiences have decided that it's cheesy. You can call it cheesy, but to me, it's charming, and it's hilarious, and it's entertaining. So, uh, more of that, please. I, I will always take a heaping helping of that kind of dialogue in a horror film, or in any movie. And I also like the way that he uh, writes the the, uh, the hillbillies. They, they, it's... it's uh, it definitely has more of a horror bent to it. Uh, and kind of a slasher film sort of feel at times, uh, especially with the fact that they're not only butchering deer, but they're also butchering people, and they're like wild men who've been living in in the woods for years. Uh, so it's kind of got a little bit of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe at points, uh, but more similar to something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, because the film is definitely has more of a sense of humor. Uh, so it's one of those things where it, it, I, the, the, it doesn't really try to over explain them either, which I really like. I like the fact that the script is not like, let's expl over explain the hillbillies and why they're here and what they're doing and so on and so forth. It's just like, nope, they're here. And our, our main characters have to find a way to survive, uh, their attacks, uh, and hopefully not end up as dinner. So it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, I'm totally okay with uh, how uh, they are handled because it actually makes them more scary to me because I don't know why they're here. I don't know what their whole motivations are. They just want to kill me. They just want to kill them. And that's scary enough to me. So, uh, and yeah, I mean, the other characters 
are written uh, really well too, uh, especially uh, Clue Gulliger's character Mason and um, Ken Swafford's character Al, and even Joey Travolta's character Marty. Uh, this is a character that starts out as kind of just he's just along for the ride, and then ultimately he. Uh, learns some very valuable lessons and learns to be a stronger individual. And I thought the way that that was handled was pretty good. And uh, overall, I mean, and Sam Bottoms as character David Rand is the one that makes the most progression because at first he he's like, I don't want to kill anybody. I don't even want to kill a deer. And then he's the one that's put in the situation where he has to kill like most of the hillbillies in order to survive and to, and to save his uh, friends and family. So, uh, yeah, uh, overall, I think the script is really uh, solid. It's a really effective script for a low-budget film. Uh, and speaking of effective, the cast, Sam Bottoms, uh, Kim Delaney, who you might recognize from other films. Uh, she's in this as Melanie, who's a love interest. Uh, she becomes essentially just a damsel in distress, but she does fight back at times. So it's not like she's totally useless, which is nice to see. Clue Gulliger, who you might remember from plenty of films. I mean, he was in Return of the Living Dead. He was in Feast. Uh, this is honestly one of his best acting roles and his best characters, if you ask me, is Mason Rand. This tough, no-nonsense father who kicks some ass and then ultimately ends up being the one who needs to be taken care of and needs to be protected by uh, the other people who are still alive in the group uh, once the hillbilly family starts hunting them down. Uh, it, it was a night, I thought that he did a great job playing both side, parts of this role. The confident badass and the vulnerable dying man. Uh, I, I really did really like that aspect of his performance. I also thought Sam Bottoms did a great job playing the his son, David, who starts off as kind of, uh, not, I don't know if aloof is the right word, but, you know, kind of just, he's just, he's just kind of mousy, not really wanting to get into much confrontation, not really wanting to do that much other than spend time with his dad and maybe, you know, help hunt some deer and then he has to turn into what is essentially a Rambo in order to save his own hide and, and uh, his friends and his family's hides. And so that was a nice transition as well and a good at performance by Sam Bottoms. Kim Delaney does fine too. Uh, she's definitely uh, uh, gorgeous in this. I've always liked her anyway. I, I remember her from... Uh, she was in Body Parts... Remember her in that, and, and uh, Darkman 2, uh, The Return of Durant. That's what I remember her from. Uh, a lot of people probably remember her more from uh, her uh, roles on uh, soap operas and TV shows like NYPD Blue. But I remember her more from those films. Ken Swarford is a guy I'd never really seen before or recognized. And I really love this character, and I like his performance. He has so many fun lines of dialogue. I love his personality and his charisma. It was nice to see another... He kind of reminded me of Brian Dennehy, you know? And uh, and that's a good thing, because Brian Dennehy is a great actor, and he's got the same sort of gruff uh, personality. Uh, so, yeah, I, I really loved uh, that performance. And Joey Travolta really surprised me as Marty. Uh, this is, Joey Travolta is not a guy who's known to be that good of an actor. And he delivers a really, uh, decent performance here. It's not amazing. It's not great. But for Joey Travolta standards, it's, it's astonishing because it's not an, it's not bad at all. He shows emotion when he needs to. He he's, he's able to show believable fright and, uh, all these other sort of things. So, yeah, uh, I was really surprised. I thought I was going to be like, oh, Joey Travolta, this is going to, he's going to suck in this. He's going to bring the film down. Uh, he only got film roles because he's the brother of John. You know, he's John's brother. But that's not the case here. Like, he actually does fit in the film, and his performance is actually pretty good. For uh, So, yeah, I was, I was really surprised. 
Uh, Maeve Nutter, I, I also didn't really see that much of him before. Uh, I, I really liked his performance as Ralph, who is Al's brother. He's a, he's an alcoholic, and he's got another. He's got a great personality and a great sense of humor as well. So it was just a lot of fun to see him uh, play off of everyone else in the group. Uh, and Lee Dubro, Lee uh, Lee Dubro, I don't know if I'm saying that correctly or not. Who plays Redbeard, the leader of of this uh, group of uh, inbred uh, hillbillies? He is really intimidating and definitely has a presence about him and i knew i recognized this guy from somewhere but i didn't quite know where until i looked up his filmography and then i then then it, then i saw exactly what i remembered him from he was in robocop he was in the 1987 classic robocop as sal he he was sal the the, the guy who was the head of this drug operation that uh, Clarence Boddicker wanted to take over? You know, he's the stupid wop ass. You know, you know, that that's that's the that's Sal from RoboCop. So it's really cool to see Sal from RoboCop in another role. Uh, Bruce Glover's also in this as One Eye. Uh, really great performance. Very creepy. Just really unsettling uh, character. Uh, just just type of just you know, unhinged hillbilly that you don't want anything to do with. Uh, and uh, you might recognize him from Popcorn. He was in that. Uh, Mickey Jones uh, plays Wash Pots. He's been in a lot of things. He was actually in Home Improvement. Like, if you remember Home Improvement, he I think he was one of the, the construction guys, one of the guys who worked for Tool Time. He was the big, fat guy with the beard in a few episodes. And he's in this as as Washpot, who's like the enforcer of the, of the hillbillies. And he's pretty fucking stout in this too. Uh, I, I definitely was not laughing at his character. Like you look at his character at home improvement. It's totally different from what his character is in this and shows that he was made. It might honestly was a better actor than probably people gave him a lot of credit for because he pulled it off. He was actually pretty scary. If you ask me, uh, a big boy that'll fuck you up. Uh, and Charles Cyphers, who has a really bit role in this, is Woody. He's almost unrecognizable. He's a total prick. He's got a sleazy smile. He, he's, he's, he's a total asshole. He works with the hillbillies because he runs this company called Razorback Meat, Com Meat Co. And... He, he, this guy... I mean, I, I was really surprised it was Charles Cyphers. It's Sheriff Brackett from Halloween. And he's a complete different uh he's a completely different character and personality in this. Like you you, you he's a shit heel, you know, just just a fucking piece of redneck shit. And it, it's just one of those things where wow, uh, it's just a really impressive performance by Charles Cyphers. Uh I also want to mention uh, Billy Drago. Yeah, Billy Drago. That Billy Drago, you recognize from a lot of different of, of uh, a lot of different action films and stuff like that in the 80s and 90s. He's fucking slithery as, as all hell in this as Snake. Uh, perfect casting choice. Uh, Billy Drago is just a creepy motherfucker, and uh, he's <laughs> his performance in this is no exception to that to that rule. Uh, and, uh, you know that Billy Bob Thornton who's apparently in this as a guy named Billy Bob? I didn't catch him, so it must have been one of his first roles, but I did not catch Billy Bob. Uh, maybe I need to flip through the film again. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was a blink and you miss a cameo, but that's kind of cool. The Billy Bob Thornton is in, is in Hunter's Blood as well, and probably a really, uh, small role. I also want to mention the score by John Andrea. I, I thought it was a really... Uh, excellent score. It, it had a really nice atmosphere to it, and it, it it definitely fit the whole vibe and the whole setting of the film. The uh, cinematography, Thomas F. D. Nove, I thought was really impressive for a low-budget film, and the editing by Barry Z uh, Zetlin, it's also uh, quite uh, efficient and effective. Uh, it runs for about 101 minutes, which. It doesn't really drag that much at all. It 
to me personally had a really good pace to it and the big reason why is because i like the characters so much i like these characters i, I want to go on this hunting trip with them i want to see them make it out alive uh when some of them die i, I did feel uh did, i did feel bad you know that, that's when some of them got knocked off by the hillbillies that just made me want the hillbillies to get their comeuppance even more than i already did and uh yeah it, it's one of those films that it could have easily been slow paced or boring, but it 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 didn't really it, it wasn't really anything like that. Despite the fact that in the first half of the film, there's not really a whole lot of action. There's a little bit of a car chase in the beginning, and so on and so forth. It's building the characters and so on and so forth. It's creating the setting, and then things start to really pick up. But uh. I thought that worked because, and it's because of the writing, it's because of how fun it is to watch these characters interact with one another. So, yeah, in terms of uh, things that I really liked about the film, that's about it. Other than I definitely want to mention the gore because the gore in this is, it's not the bloodiest or the goriest movie out there, but it's got enough of it that it gives it an edge that really separates it from other films like it. Uh, for instance, there are these two, uh, they might as well police officers uh, who are game wardens who are going around and policing the woods and trying to get the, the group of uh, guys to leave the forest because there's these uh, group of hillbillies that live there that are vicious and uh, so on and so forth. And the guys are like, ah, oh, whatever, nah, we, you know, we drove all this way, you know, we went through that car chase with the, with the guy who was selling the beer, you're like, we're, we're, we're not gonna, we're not gonna stop our hunting trip over this, you know, we, we came too far. And so these game wardens actually end up uh, saving the group's bacon, because they're almost they're they're almost about ready to get slaughtered right then and there by the hillbillies when they catch them uh, slaughtering some deer in a, in a part of the woods, but then they get their bacon saved by the game wardens. The game wardens arrest the hillbillies and you think, all right, everything's gonna be okay now, but nope. The hillbillies had another one of their kin hiding in the bushes somewhere, shoots one of the game wardens, and then all hell breaks loose, and the game wardens get killed. And now the uh, hunters become the hunted, and the, uh, so the, the uh, group of guys who went on this hunting trip are now being hunted by these hillbillies, and they come across various different uh, bits of the game wardens throughout the woods when they're trying to stay one step ahead of the hunters. So they see one of the game wardens who's, who's strapped to a tree and he's got his flesh ripped off and you can see the muscle, which is something you normally don't see that often in films uh, like this. It was just, it was a really horrific aftermath. It was a great uh, practical effect. And then later they see, the other game warden's severed head just hanging off a tree branch, which is quite a gory image. And if that isn't gory enough, there's a scene where Sam Bottoms comes across a pretty boy, one of the hillbillies, and he shoots him in the face. And then the camera pans to pretty boy on the, on the ground with his arms twitching and his fucking face blown off. And it's all done practically... You, you see, like, the top of his scalp just hanging on to the, you know, flopping around. You know, just kind of, it just flopped over on, on onto the dirt. And there's this blood. And you see, like, what looks like just, uh, it's completely unrecognizable. Doesn't even look like a human face anymore. You see, like, the bottom teeth and, like, the whole fucking top of the head is blown off. It, it's, it's a really gruesome image and it's a really effective makeup effect i mean god damn like when i first saw that i was like holy shit damn I, it was it elicited it, it elicited a really strong reaction from me when i first saw it and then there's uh blood and stuff like that throughout as well when the hillbillies get shot when redbeard gets shot at the end of the end of the film uh it's a there's a good amount of blood squibs so yeah it's bloody it's gory and uh 
Yeah, that's more than I can say for a lot of other films. I mean, Deliverance isn't that gory. Uh, so this is one of those movies that definitely does have a horror feel to it. And a big reason why is because of those bits of gore that are sprinkled throughout the film. Now, when it comes to things about the movie that I didn't feel quite clicked, I, I, I didn't really like the ending. I thought it was one of those like, uh-huh, setting it up for a sequel. It was like a sequel bait ending where, oh, it looks like the, the group, the remaining survivors, uh, they've, they've made it out alive and they got on the train and Redbeard is dead and, and they're going to make it back to, to society safely. And, and then, and then, and then the camera shows you that they're on the razor, uh, razorback meat company, uh, train. And I'm like, was that really necessary? I don't think that was necessary. It was one of those like sequel bait endings for a sequel that never happened and kind of made it look like it was a bad ending. Like they're going to be taken to the plant and get fucked over, which I'm not really a fan of. Uh, thankfully though, they don't actually show you them, them getting fucked over. So I get, you could maybe, uh, look at it as if, oh, it's just, yeah, it looks like it's bad, but really, you know, they're just going into town and they'll get off the train before they go into the station and then they'll find some way to get back to, uh, Oklahoma and they'll be safe and sound. Uh, but yeah, I mean, but it doesn't really say, make it that clear. So I, I didn't really care for that ending. I also would have liked to have seen a little bit more variety in the action uh, during uh, the finale. Uh, there, there's just a lot of just shooting the gun and it, it gets a little bit repetitive. Uh, and and also, I did like the score, but I w I, some of it I would have liked a little bit more of... Uh, of I don't know if variety is the right word, but a little bit more of a different sort of atmosphere and mood, like maybe some a music near the end that really helped uh, enhance the suspense because the music is creepy and it fits the, the atmosphere well. But like when it gets to like the action scenes, it doesn't really mesh as well with the rest of the movie. Um, kind of comes across as a little kind of uh, too tongue in cheek at times. But those are like really small problems I have with the film. The ending is one of the bigger problems I have with it because I just I just don't really like the way it ends. And uh, but other than that, I don't really know what else to say about the film except I mean even there's a main there's a song that's played throughout the movie that's a lot of fun too, which I wanted to make a, a reference to uh, before I stop talking. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. This was a hidden gem. Uh, really had a lot of fun with it. I, I really do hope this gets a DVD or Blu-ray release from uh, some company, uh, Unearthed Films, Arrow Video, somebody. At this point, I don't really care what it is. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, I don't really know what else to say about the film except if I were to rate it out of five stars. i give it four out of five. Really good hillbilly horror film. Uh, the type of movie you don't see made very much nowadays with a lot of charm and, uh, just, just a really entertaining, uh, good old time with some good old boys. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching my review of the hunter of Hunter's blood. And as always, I will see you later. See ya.